اعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطاهرين Dear sisters and brothers and iman, salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We recently celebrated birth anniversaries of the three heroes of Karbala Imam Hussain, Abbas bin Ali and Imam Sajjad alayhi wa salatu wa salam one important lesson that we learn from Karbala is that test and trials, imtihan and ibtila of this world is not only for adults and the elderly, it is also for the youth. In these extraordinary days that the world is facing due to the coronavirus crisis, all of us are going through tests and trials in different ways. This includes the youth generation. Most of you would be in high school or university at the moment, but instead are self-isolating at home. Many of you also work full of part-time jobs, which are now suspended. This group also cannot go unrecognized for its extensive volunteerism and community involvement. However, these activities are also on hold. So staying at home with no school, recreation, work or community connection, you are left with more free time on your hands. In my last message, I presented the advice of Imam Ali salam to seek Allah's protection against misguidance of tests and trials. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min madallatil fitan. Also remember that idle time can become a misguiding element of tests and trials. There are some productive things you can do to keep yourselves busy and avoid these pitfalls. First, you should find time early morning every day during this crisis to reflect on the purpose of life. This we can learn by reciting a passage from Dua'i Makarim al Akhlaq, where Imam Zain al Abidin has taught us to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in following words. وَعَمِّرْنِي بِمَا كَانَ عُمْرِي بِظْلَطًا فِي طَاعَتِكَ فَإِذَا كَانَ عُمْرِي مَرْطَعًا لِلشَّيْطَانِ فَاقْبِضْنِي إِلَيْكَ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَسْبِقَ مَقْتَكَ إِلَيَّ أَوْ يَسْتَحْكِمْ غَضَبُكَ عَلَيَّ Let me live so long as my life is spent in, in your obedience. But when my life becomes a breeding ground for the shaitan, then take me to you before your wrath advances towards me or your anger be becomes firm on me. So constantly remind yourself of the purpose of life. You are here to serve your Lord. You are here to build your, uh, your akhirah, your hereafter. The second point is that the fear for yourself and your family, the uncertainty, financial difficulties and other concerns are all valid wor worries. These circumstances can take a toll on anyone's mental health, whether you have pre-existing conditions or not. These feelings are further compounded when you have free time to dwell on fears. This is just as true as a youth, in addition to the challenges you already face at this stage in your life. If you are facing challenges of anxiety or other manifestations related to mental health, it's important to first recognize and accept it, and then seek help. There are many free services available by phone and electronically, offered by local governments uh, and many Shia uh, community organizations. The third point is keep yourself occupied because idle time becomes the breeding ground for the shaitan. And few points that I would like to share with you in order to keep your, yourself busy. Number one, use this downtime as an opportunity to see how you can help your parents around the house. Perhaps during the busy schedule of school and work, you didn't get time to contribute to household chores. This is your time to pitch in. You will gain respect in the eyes of your parents, yourself, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, if you have younger siblings, give them company to help combat the feeling of loneliness, assist them in their academics, and engage them in physical activity, board games, and other at-home activities. Number three, set up a time for yourself to catch up with reading some Islamic books and watching documentaries on history and science. I will suggest some uh, titles here. For the Quran, 
read the commentary of Surah Al-Hujarat, the 49th Surah of the Quran. The commentary that I will recommend is the one written by Ayatollah Jafar Subhani and his entitled is The Islamic Moral System. This is a relatively short surah that contains some very important moral and ethical values in our faith. Second item for reading is Nahdul Balagha. However, I don't suggest that you read the entire book. Uh, rather, I would recommend that you look at the thematic commentary by Shaheed Murtaza Mutahiri entitled as Glimpses of the Nahdul Balagha. Each chapter can be read independently. If you already read this book by Murtaza Mutahiri, then try the book entitled as Justice and Remembrance by Dr. Kazimi. The third item for reading list is it's the month of Sha'ban now. So spend some time to read about the Imam of our time, Al Hujjat ibn al Hassan, salawatullah alayhi, so that your understanding and connection to the Imam becomes stronger. But don't fall down the path of reading forward sent to you regarding the coronavirus being a sign of the appearance of the 12th Imam. Instead, read an excellent write-up on the Imam by Shaheed Sayyid Muhammad Baqir al-Sadr entitled as An Inquiry Concerning Al-Mahdi. It's a very important first book to read on this uh, topic. Number four, browse the table of Contents of As Sahifa Sajjadiyah of our fourth Imam. It is known in English as the Psalms of Islam. A selected dua or two that you find relevant to these days or particular uh, situations in your own life. Now, let me go on to uh, another item on this issue. Dedicate a portion of your time, preferably at night, to perform some Sunnah prayers. Also, recite some duas with the translation, especially during Thursday nights. One recommendation would be to, re to read Du'a Tawbah with translation. Number five, as far as keeping yourself busy is concerned, pick up with, with that hobby or interest you have always been meaning to try. Maintaining an interest as long as it doesn't have negative effects is healthy and en enjoyable. You will expand your knowledge, pick up a skill, grow as a person, and most importantly, you will simply have fun. Number six, finally remember that shaitan is sitting and waiting to ambush and trap you during these difficult yet idle circumstances. You need to be extra vigilant against his ploys. Whenever shaitanic whisperings enter your mind, say, I seek the protection of Allah against the shaitan. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim This is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah number 41, ayat 36, where he says, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْتَانِ نَزْغًا فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ وَالسَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمِ Should a temptation from shaitan disturb you, seek the protection of Allah. Indeed, he is the all-hearing and all-knowing. One effective way of fighting shaitan is to avoid staying alone. If you are fortunate enough to be living with, with family, spend time with them. Watch a movie, eat together, talk, play board games or sports, or find a common hobby. If you live alone, there are some ways to avoid feeling alone. Video call friends and family, watch a movie or show together, play games online with friends. Of course, you have to make sure that whatever you are watching or what you are, whatever you are playing online is according to the uh, acceptable norms of the Sharia. Also remember during this crisis and beyond that there are active Shia youth groups ready to help or to direct you towards help as necessary. Search online for the closest Shia youth group and reach out to them. They will connect you with other youth, programs, events, or even volunteer uh, opportunities. And lastly, if you find yourself still struggling, are feeling alone, have any questions or issues, don't hesitate to send me a DM. Keep yourself safe 
and take the protections which uh, health officials are insisting again and again and always pray for the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wasila of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad salawatullahi alayhi wa ajma'in wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh